Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Carlos Rivera. God bless you. Good to be with you this morning and uh, ready to uh, get into God's word with you and, of course, pray. You know, the power of prayer is so amazing, right? Uh, when, we, when, we, when we hear what God does and when we see what God can do, when we begin to join our faith together, you know, I, I, re I really believe that that's really the power that, uh, that we're experiencing now, you know, t today. I, I know I am in my own personal life because ever since I started gathering together with you guys, it's been almost a year now, I just, I just feel like God's been doing these amazing things, like just intervening and, and, and I'm hearing all these great testimonies and, and, uh, and I really believe that God really honors the fact that we get up in the morning early, right? The Bible said, uh, said early in the morning I show rise up and seek thee. And I, and I believe that when you put God first in your day, that's how you know he's first in your life. Come on, somebody, listen. What we do daily, amen, impacts our lives, right? So, uh, so when we make God first in our day, I believe it shows that he's really first in our life. That's right. It, uh, it's a tangible way to measure and to know that your commitment to God is 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 uh, is is solid. It's it's faithful. Uh, you understand the priorities and the importance that it is uh, to spend time with the Lord every single day. So uh, I want to thank all of you guys for being so faithful. And uh, we've joined. Listen, our faith gathering together. Uh, so many wonderful miracles have happened. Amen. So many great things have happened. Uh, since we started gathering together every single morning. I know the sun is going to be kind of bright right here, uh, but it's okay, man. It's a beautiful, sunshiny day here. Uh, Rose and I have enjoyed this, this pastor's conference that we've been on. And uh, so anyway, I, I just want to get into God's word this morning, amen, and just begin uh, our session together. And, and, I, and I know, listen, I want to thank you guys for sharing. Right now, before we get started, if you have a praise report, Go ahead and put your praise report right in the comments. That's right. Put your praise reports. If you have something that, that God's done in your life, uh, I know Lynn Bell, I know you shared a, a powerful testimony of, of things that happened in the past. And, and, uh, and Nanine, you've shared some wonderful things that God has done. So listen, if you've got a praise report right now before we get started, just put in your praise report. Amen. Put in the things that God has done in your life that you know that that you know that it happened because you're spending time with Him, because you're getting closer to Him, because every day you look forward to this time of gathering together and to be in the presence of God and to gather together with God's people in faith and in strength. Amen. And it's so important because you know because because <clears throat> today I've, I've entitled this time together walking in unity, walking in unity the power listen there is power when we when we walk together in unity amen as a matter of fact colossians uh, 3 chapter i'm sorry chapter 3 verse 12 and 14 says this therefore as god has cho as god's chosen people holy and dearly beloved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of all these virtues, oh, if any of, of you have grievances against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds together, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Wow, what a powerful word. It's what we need to do to walk in unity. We need these attributes, amen, because so many, so many times as, 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 as human beings, right, like we're, we fall short, you know, we walk, we walk, uh, sometimes we can be prideful, uh, or we, and it's very easy to maybe be offended by what somebody says or, or maybe offend somebody else. And when you do that, you kind of you break the unity that's between you, right? It creates a rift. In the in the in the, um, in the relationship, and you see where there is unity, there is strength. Write that down. Where there is unity, there is strength. That's right, because God's word says that when two or more are gathered together in my name, right, that He'll show up. Uh, his His presence will be there. But He says when two or more touch and agree, when there's agreement, that means there's unity. 
then God will do some great and mighty things and answer the prayers, amen. And that's what we, we wanna make sure that our prayer life is not hindered by allowing, sometimes, and sometimes even petty stuff, right? We allow little things to get between us, misunderstandings, when we should understand that we need to protect the unity. If we're gonna walk in unity, we need to protect it. Don't allow the enemy to hold, to, to have you hold something against somebody because it doesn't hurt them, it hurts you. At the end of the day, unforgiveness is such a terrible thing because it don't, not only does it break the unity between you and the person, but it also breaks the unity between you and God. God says, listen, uh, if, you, if you have something against somebody, take that gift that you're bringing before me, and go ahead and go back and go fix that situation, go fix that misunderstanding, and then, the Bible says that God is going to go ahead and answer your prayers. So you don't want your prayers hindered. You don't want your life hindered, right? No matter what the issue may be, we will always have someone who either opposes us or resists us, amen, and, uh, and of course, who believes something that, offend, that, that, that offends us. You know, sometimes, listen, I'll tell you what, as a pastor, you don't even know some of the stuff that we go through behind the scenes. And people think that like we don't get offended, like and, and, and we have to hold it in, and you know, and, and we and we do. We 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 try to uh, kind of keep ourselves together, right? We we have to pray regularly, just like everybody else does. But just know that we're human beings too, right? Pastors are human beings, and we can be offended by, by what people say. We just don't allow. We just don't allow those things to to, to stay in our lives because we need to forgive and, and move on, amen. Because we've got work to do for the Lord, and we want to make sure that our lives are not hindered by anything that someone says to us or does to us. Does that make sense? I mean, it, it really is such an important part of our lives. So, walking as a pastor, you got to be a good forgiver, y'all. Come on, somebody. Just like in a marriage, right? So instead of getting angry and taking offense and and, and pridefully depend, defending our point of view, we can intentionally choose to show patience and love and goodwill. And I gotta tell you folks, it's not easy sometimes, but through the Holy Spirit, amen, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of God, we can make it happen, praise God. See, when we do this, we're, we're doing far more to change the world. When we walk in, 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 in humility, amen, and we walk in, in God's forgiveness, then that really makes an impact, not only in your life, but the impact in the person that's watching you as well. And, and see, if you want to say, I always say this, if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Mm. If you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go further, then go, hallelujah, together, amen. Because, because alone we're good, but we're better together. Write that down. Alone, we're good, but we're better together. And you know, one of the things that I believe about of walking in unity is a lot of times it's, our, it's, it's kind of how we feel, right? Our emotions. And sometimes lack of sleep can, can play a big part in our, in our attitudes, uh, in our demeanor, right? How we handle and talk to people. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I don't get my good amount of sleep, sometimes we can be a little cranky throughout the day, right? We can be a little short with people, and then we don't really mean it, man. It's not like it's not like we we're, we're really mean-hearted people. It's just that lack of sleep creates all kinds of issues in our lives. In Mark chapter three, verse thirty-one, it says this: He said to them, "This is Jesus. Come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest a while." For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. That's found in Matthew 6.31. They were so busy that they didn't rest well. And when you don't rest well and you don't eat well, then man, it begins to take its toll on your energy level, but also it takes its toll on your, on your attitude, right? Sleep, listen, write this down if you're taking notes, y'all. Sleep is the seed for new energy. Sleep is the seed for new energy. So you know, if you need that, you, we need energy every day, right? So we, not, we gotta make sure that sleep becomes a priority because this body needs rest, your mind needs rest. If you don't give yourself that proper time of rest, then after a while, it begins to accumulate. And listen, people get sick, right? You can get sick from not sleeping well. Uh, I think that you know you can, you can have all kinds of other physical ailments that happen when you don't sleep well. 
So, so I want to encourage you, listen, encourage you, make sleep a priority in your life because you want to be charged up the next day. You want to be prepared. You want to always have your best foot forward, right? And it takes rest and sleep. Then Jesus says, come out to me, all you that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's the rest of the Lord. It's the rest, the physical rest that it also requires in order to have the energy we need as well. See, accept your personal and uh, personal and unique sleep requirements. See, everybody needs a certain amount of sleep no matter who you are. And we all have different requirements. Like some people get along with seven hours sleep or eight hours sleep. Uh, some people need more, but, but know what you need. Like I'm really good with about seven hours. If I at least get seven hours sleep, I'm good. I mean, once in a while I do push it to eight, but I just have, a, I have an internal alarm clock that wakes me up, right? See, when you're tired, you think differently, you talk differently, uh, you assess life differently, right? When you're tired, it's like, man, that's the time like you wanna just quit. Come on, somebody, can we just keep it real for a moment? When you get super tired, it's like, oh man, I don't wanna do this anymore. And you can get all these negative thoughts and the enemy just rushes in when you're tired. Listen, Jesus was fasting and praying on that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And the enemy, you know, you know, when you're fasting like that, your body gets tired. And of course, the enemy tried to attack when he was tired physically and hungry. But Jesus, man, through the power of the Holy Spirit, of course, that was dwelling in him, was able to fight off the enemy by using God's word. So he was able to invest in time in the word of God, and, and that paid off, especially in times when he was being tempted. And that should be the same thing with us. And listen, write this down if you're taking notes. When fatigue walks in, faith walks out. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, my goodness. When fatigue walks in, faith walks out because when you're so tired and fatigued from pushing yourself so hard sometimes it's just hard to believe god for the things that you really want in your life amen and you know for sure i, I believe that 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 what makes it so important to get that sleep right to walk in unity and get that sleep and that rest to have the right attitude is that we need to remember that god god promises provision write that down god promises provision you know, in, uh, in Luke chapter 12, verse 23 and 24, God's word says this, for life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to them than any other, to him than any other birds. Come on, man. Listen, some, sometimes God turns your life upside down so you can live right side up. Oh, oh my goodness, God's provision. At the end of the day, sometimes God, I said, like I said, I gotta repeat that one more time. God, God turns your life upside down so you can live right side up. See, sometimes God shakes us, amen. Sometimes God allows us to walk in, in areas of our lives. And, and listen, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Because through that, God begins to develop something in our lives. And one of the things he wants is for us to depend on him. God wants us to trust him and depend on him for everything in our lives. And you see, so unlike the, the young rich man, the disciples left everything to follow Jesus. See, when you read the parable about that rich young man, when Jesus said, listen, give up everything and follow me, he had a hard time doing. And it wasn't, and I believe that Jesus knew his heart. It wasn't that just that he should give up all his possessions, but he had a hold, his, uh, his heart was held by those possessions. So when he challenged that area, amen, then he, was, he actually walked away and said, man, I can't do that. I have all this stuff. See, Jesus knew that it, was, it wasn't enough just to follow the rules and follow the law and go through all the motions. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, it was about surrendering, right? It's about surrendering uh, the things that have a hold on you because the things that you hold on to have a hold on you, right? And God... And Jesus was telling him, release those things so I can get closer to me because there's no room for you in me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. God wants us to release, <coughs> excuse me, who we are and be a blessing as well and serve the Lord. You see in this passage, because uh, he's talking to the, remember, this is a parable that he's sharing with this rich young guy, right? Uh, and of course, 
He says, listen, you're providing for yourself, but if you allow God, he promises all the provisions in his word. So, so he's saying, don't worry about your provision, right? God will give you the vision, and then he'll make the provision. So at the end of the day, if you're, if you're, if you're just thinking you're going to provide for yourself, then that means that you become the source. See, but we know that God is the source of every good thing. So even though, uh, you know, things around us are our resource, God is the source, right, for everything good in our lives. See, if God cares for these unclean birds, these birds were un... See, it's amazing how Jesus uses a raven. Yeah, I mean, he could have used any other bird. He could have used any other a parable, but instead he used a raven. And he said, listen, if you guys, if, if, if he takes care of a raven, who we consider to be an unclean bird, imagine how much more he's going to love you and provide for every single area of your life. See, where God, just remember this, folks, where God guides, God provides. <laughs> Go ahead, write that down real quick. Where God guides, God provides. And you know, part of walking in unity staying rested, trusting in God's provision, is this is so important, guys. Choose friendships wisely. Choose friendships wisely. In Proverbs 13, 20, it says this, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Wow. That's, that's found in Proverbs 13, 20. You see, in this proverb, what Solomon is saying is, listen, Choose your friendships wisely. See, who you surround yourself determines the person you become. I'll write that down. Who you surround yourself with determines the person you become. See, life is better together, and God wants us to enjoy a healthy, healthy and balanced relationships. But we have to make sure, folks, that we choose our relationships wisely. And are we adding value to them? And are they adding value to us? Do our relationships with other people make an impact in a positive way in both their lives and our lives as well? You see, who you choose to spend time with is one of the most important decisions you can ever make. The, the people you surround yourself with right now in your life really do impact what's happening in your life. So I believe that if you want certain things to happen, you want good things, listen, I want to be with people who are already where I want to be, right? I want to be with successful people, people who have a different mindset because when you're around those type of people, right, it begins to rub off on you as well. And that mindset is contagious. And you start looking at life a little bit differently. You see, when you listen to the right voices, listen to this, when you listen to the right voices, you make the right choices. <laughs> That's right. When you when you listen to the right voices, you make the right choices. But even right now, listen, I gotta laugh. People are walking behind me this whole time, right? And I'm ministering to you guys because I'm in this area, the only area I could find right now in this hotel that I'm staying to minister to you guys. I, I did it here yesterday and of course it was quiet, but today people are walking by, right? And, and they're behind me. And they're, but you know what I, what I know? That as they're walking, I'm talking. Like I didn't stop one bit because I'm believing that I'm speaking faith, right? Into our lives, into your life and mine, but also so as people are walking by, they're being touched too. And a lot of these folks are really successful. This area of the hotel is for people who are really successful, right? This side, I'm staying on the other side, right? Because well, it's not so expensive on the other side. But at the end of the day, listen, surround yourself with the right people. Listen to the right voices. You know, choose your friendships wisely. Make sure that there are people that can speak into your life that make you feel good about yourself, amen? And if there's relationships that, that maybe don't do that, but you have to have them in your life, then learn how to how to separate yourselves emotionally from them. And don't allow their words or their negativity uh, to touch your heart or to, or, to, or to make you bitter towards them. Listen, learn how to rise above the circumstances and just keep your joy, right? Don't let the enemy ever steal your joy because of somebody else. At the end of the day, you have total control over your attitude and you can always remain joyful no matter what the circumstances is. So listen, go intentionally after people who bless your life, amen? And keep those people close. Call them, let them know you love them, and let them know that they are making a difference in your life as well, amen? Well, praise God, hallelujah. Listen, we're gonna go ahead and start praying right now. Just lift up your hands right where you are. Begin to give the Lord the praise and the glory and the honor this morning, amen? Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you and praise you for this beautiful day. 
but this is the day that you've made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it, oh God. And right now, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to walk in unity, Lord, that you would help us to not be offended by people, that you would help us to forgive others quickly when they do offend us, oh God. And we just thank you in Jesus' name for the power to release situations in our life and walk in unity of heart, Lord God, never allowing others to dictate our emotions, our, 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 our how we feel about ourselves as well, Lord Father, but to walk in total unity of heart and walk in unity with my brothers and sisters. So Lord, in Jesus' name, we just thank you, Lord God. And Father, we I pray for many of many people, Lord God, that right now are having a hard time sleeping, Lord God. The cares of this world, the worries, all the things that are going on, on around us, Lord God, uh, it, it seems to penetrate our hearts and our minds to the place that, Father, it affects our sleep and we worry, Lord God. But your word says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to make your request be known unto God. Then the peace that surpasses all understanding will cover our hearts and our minds. That's your word, oh God. So help us not to worry. Help us, Father God, to get a good night's sleep, knowing that you have us in the palm of your hand, knowing that we can trust you for everything that's happening, Lord God, that we don't have to worry. We need to just learn how to turn it over to you. And instead of worry, we're just gonna worship you, Lord God, and magnify your name, oh God, that you, oh Lord, will be greater than any mountain, than any problem, than any circumstance we may be facing in Jesus' name. So we thank you, Lord God, even now, Lord Father, for, 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 the, for, good, for a good night's sleep, oh God, in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you, Lord God, that you provide for every need, Lord God, and you promise to provide. And we thank you for all your promises, oh God, and we praise you, Lord God, that we can receive those promises by faith. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. And Father God, help us, oh God. Help us to be wise as we choose our friends, to be wise with those that we spend time with, oh God. To spend time with those that can help us and teach us, Lord God. Even sometimes just being with the right people, Lord God, in the right spirit, Lord God, is, is so liberating and so, it's fellowship, Lord God. It, it's a connection with each other in the spirit realm that, that lifts us up, Lord God, and, and is positive. And, we, and Lord, we just thank you right now, Father, for, for, for bringing those people and those relationships into our lives right now. In Jesus' name, oh God, that, that, you, could, that you would bring and draw the right people that could, that could be those that surround us, Lord God, because we want to be around people that want to grow and because we want to grow. So, Father, if they don't grow, if they can't grow with us, they can't go with us, oh God. So, Lord, help us bring the right people into our lives, oh God, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, right now, we're going to lay hands on all these prayer requests, right? People that you may be praying for, interceding for, trusting the Lord for miracles for. Just lay hands right now on that. And, Father, we just thank you for all the names that we've written down on this list. We thank you for salvation, for healing, for your provision, for, for deliverance, for change to be broken in people's lives. We thank you for miracles and signs and wonders. We thank you for the supernatural move of your Holy Spirit upon their lives as we pray for them and intercede and stand in the gap for them, oh God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you that even now you're, you're saving, even now you're healing, even now you're providing, that even in this moment, Lord God, you're, you're setting people free, Lord God, you're setting the captive free right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just praise you and thank you, Lord God, because oh, you're so faithful, Lord God, and we praise you that even when we don't deserve it, Lord God, you're still faithful. And we thank you for meeting needs, for healing relationships, oh God, for healing marriages, Lord God, in Jesus' name, and for, and for, and for, and for being a blessing. And I pray specifically this morning for those, oh God, that are doing your work, that, you, that, you, that you've called, Lord God. Even They may be in the marketplace, but Lord God, we're 100% Christian. We're not part-time anything, Lord God. We're 100% everything that we do. So I pray your blessing and your anointing would grow in people's lives, that when they speak, your power will be released to those that are listening, oh Father. And in Jesus' name, we just thank you for the victory. We thank you for the harvest. And Lord, we're just gonna give you all the glory Make sure you get all the honor and praise for all that goes on in our lives. And we just praise you in Jesus' holy name. 
Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, let's give the Lord a praise. This sun is cooking, y'all. I'm serious. I can't even see myself right now in the screen. But listen, thanks again so much. It's been a great week. It really has. Thank you for all your prayers for myself and Rosa and my family. You know, Gabe is here in Florida working. I saw him yesterday. I'm just so proud of my son. He's doing such an amazing job and making a difference. The pastors he's walking, he's working for, man. I just got to brag on my son a minute. The pastor said, man, I'll tell you what, you guys have done a great job with your son. And listen, I just thank the Lord, right? I just thank God that, that we were always praying over our children. We, 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 we spoke a destiny. We spoke uh, God's purpose into their life. Even as little babies, man, we would just pray over them that they'll be great men of God, that they, they would find women of God when they grew up. And we just prayed for that all their lives. So, you know, we see the manifestation of prayer. And uh, it's just great to see him and, and Brianna, his uh, fiance, working here. And uh, it was, it was a, it's been a real blessing for us. And of course, it's also been a time of rest for us and kind of recharging our batteries. So, um, so we're looking forward to getting back home and just continuing to plow the ground with you, amen, to continue to advance God's kingdom together, right, and continue to do God's work. So listen, uh, I want to close with this one scripture. I love Psalms. Psalms 112, verse 1 and 2 says this, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who design, who delights greatly in his commandments. Now, I love this. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. Oh, there's the next generation, y'all. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Wow. That is so powerful, Lord. Listen. I believe this word is for some of y'all that need to understand that you're that you're planting seeds into the next generation in your lives, your children, and maybe have an impact on your children's children as well, right? But I love the part that says wealth and riches. Listen, it's okay to ha have nice things. It's okay to walk in God's blessing and prosper. At the end of the day, I was a businessman for many, many years. So at the end of the day, uh, I was able to carry some of those things over. And listen, I have rental properties. That's right. I was a president of a mortgage company, right? It's okay to have good things and, and to want a better life for your children. Like, I want to leave stuff for my kids, right? I want to leave them a house when I leave. I want to leave them something that they'll say, Daddy blessed us on the way out. Not only did he bless us while we were here, but on the way out, he blessed us as well. And you know, that's what I want to do for my family. And, I, and I'm working hard to do that as well. So listen, God bless every one of you. Thank you so much for joining me. I do, I'm so excited that you join me every week. And listen, we're going to get together, Lord willing, again on Monday at 7 a.m. right here on the Walking in the Spirit program. And just believe God for signs and miracles and wonders and blessings for your life. And, and listen, let me just pray the, a prayer of blessing over you right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I pray you will bless my brothers and sisters. Keep them, O God. Father, uh, let your face shine upon them. Uh, be gracious to them, O Lord. And in Jesus' name, I pray right now, Lord God, that you lift up your countenance and give them peace. <laughs> give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. <coughs> in Jesus' name. <coughs> oh, my goodness. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. Remember, when you're walking in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. God bless you.